everyone, welcome back to Halaluji. Today we will be visiting Giza Necropolis in Egypt. Join me in this epic journey through time as we explore the mighty pyramids and the enigmatic sphinx. But that's not all, we'll also unravel the treasures of ancient civilization at National Museum of Egyptian Civilization. From mummies to mesmerizing artifacts, this adventure is packed with history and awe. So buckle up, hit that subscribe button and let's embark on this captivating odyssey together. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. Assalamualaikum sabah al khair everyone Today is our last day in Cairo So today we have to check out super early in the morning And then tonight after we finish everything We will make our way to go to Mansura Which will take around 3 hours journey from Cairo to reach Mansura This is my third day here eating the same breakfast But it's okay because my intention is just that So we have enough energy to walk today But there's nothing much we can do about this because because here in Egypt, there are not so many restaurants or shops open in the morning for breakfast so we like it or not, we have to eat at the hotel and even if one travel very far, usually it is hard to find also shop in between the attraction places. Usually what I would do is we will eat a very full breakfast and then we'll bring some snack or take away some sandwich or wrap or shawarma for our lunch. That's what we usually do because we don't have enough time to go and dine in at a restaurant when we are traveling. The weather today is 9 degrees and you can see the fog here but I'm feeling okay. <laughs> I haven't felt the coldness yet. I'm still good. It's still early in the morning. There's a slight change to our plan for today because our driver is late. He is going to arrive here maybe in one hour time so we're going to go and check out Tahrir Square first before we head to Giza. Bangunan dia lama betul. Walking through downtown Cairo feels like strolling to an ancient history book. Every building is like a whisper from different era all mesh up together in this crazy beautiful way. Turns out that Khadif Ismail Pasha, the grandson of Muhammad Ali Pasha, was obsessed with Paris back in the day. And he wanted Cairo to be just as fancy. So he brought in European architects and over 100,000 European workers to build him a mini Paris right here in the heart of Egypt. I think I've said this over and over again since my first day in Cairo. Wow, macam like Paris pula. At a glance, this area looks like a mini Paris to me. Apparently, my instinct was right, guys. We have reached Tahrir Square, which is located in the middle of downtown Cairo. It is also locally known as Mati Square and it is a major public town square here in downtown Cairo. Right in the heart of the square stands the obelisk of Ramses II, originally discovered in Tanis or San al haga back in 2019. And it is guarded by four ram-headed sphinx statues relocated all the way from Karnak. Basically, this square has been the common place for them to perform political demonstration. That includes the demonstration in 2011 which brings down their president Hosni Mubarak. Tahrir Square is pretty guarded these days after the protest incident. So if you guys glance from afar, you'll spot us spotting blue vests keeping a close watch on the square. My mom tried to grab a close-up video from a distance but suddenly a guard appeared and reminded her to put the camera away. The guards are everywhere guys but fret not, they are here to maintain safety. Unless you do something provocative then there's nothing to be worried about and it's practically very safe here in Cairo. If you guys see the building, the orange color, red color building at my back there, that is the Egyptian museum. But uh, because they have moved the mummy to the new museum that we are going to go, the Grand Egyptian Museum. But that new museum is scheduled to open by September to November 2002. I'm not too sure if it's open but uh, most probably if we went there today, maybe not all of them are already in the museum because they are still in the process of moving those collections from this museum to the Grand Egyptian Museum. 
Okay guys, I just spotted a charming little cafe called La Poa right up ahead and it looks like they are open early in the morning too. As the name suggests, La Poa is a French cafe and they have several branches across Egypt. It serves all sorts of food and drinks from coffee, sandwich, cakes to salads and other delicious treats. So if you guys are looking for a quick bite before you hit the road again, this might be the perfect spot for you. I didn't have chance to check it out myself since I was waiting for our driver but I'll definitely take you guys there later on in my other videos okay? So make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss out when I post it. Alright guys, our driver is here. It's time to embark on our epic adventure to the crown jewels of Egypt, the majestic Giza Pyramids. As we drive through the street, we can already catch glimpses of pyramids peeking out from behind the buildings. They are like giant guardians watching over the city from afar. And I can't wait to show it to you guys. So we have arrived here yes. in Giza. Yeah. <laughs> this is Amu Walid. Yeah, yeah. Amu Walid. Yeah. He's our Bye. driver here today. So we are gonna go and buy yeah. the entrance ticket to the pyramid. Yes. Uh, the price is 200 the name for adults and for students you get it at half price which is 100 Egyptian pounds. So we are just going to explore the outside area of this Giza necropolis. But if you want to visit each of the pyramid, the inside, the price is different. Let's say for the Great Pyramid, the price is 400 gene. You guys can go at the ticket counter and buy your own ticket over there. As usual, we need to go through security check and then we'll have to scan our ticket. <laughs> Guys, I just had a major brain freeze moment. I'm so used to hopping into the van from the left side that my body just went autopilot here but in Egypt, it's the opposite side. Okay, enough with the chatter. Now let's hit the road and uncover the marvels of one of the seven wonders of the world. If you are looking for a hassle-free and informative experience, hiring a guide is the way to go. They'll drive us around, saving us time and energy and share their knowledge of the area, making our visit even more enriching. With Didi, we'll get dropped off at the entrance so we'll need to do some walking but it's a great way to get a feel for the scale of the necropolis. Alternately, you can also hire a horse carriage ride to get around. Inside the Giza necropolis, you can find three big pyramids. Upon your entry, in front of you will be the Great Pyramid or also known as Pyramid of Chops or Pyramid Khufu. It was built back in 2580 to 2560 before century and it is the oldest among the three pyramids. This magnificent pyramid was built as the tomb of Pharaoh Khufu who reigned during the glorious 4th dynasty of the Old Kingdom. This giant stood as the tallest structure in the world for 3,800 years and believe it or not, it is made up of 2 million stone blocks each weighing around 2.5 tons guys. The rocks is really massive, you can see the human over there. My sister's size compared to the rock size is really massive. I don't even know how did they make this back then. Because right now it's winter so the rock felt cold. And if you want to go inside the pyramid, the entrance is over there. You can see like a hole and entrance stairs. You can climb to go inside the pyramid but we are not going to go there today. So we'll just enjoy the pyramid from the outside. The front section of the pyramid is a little bit crowded so if you want to take photo I suggest you to go the other side the left side or the back side but at the back side they didn't allow you to climb the rocks only the front side is open so you can pose with the rocks by the way guys based on my reading I saw that there's a limit if you want to go inside the uh, pyramid there's a limit every day I believe it's 300 packs per day so really if you want to go inside you should come very early in the morning so that you you are able to purchase the ticket to enter. The one on my left side is the somewhat smaller pyramid. It's called Pyramid Khafra. This enigmatic pyramid of Khafra is the second tallest and largest at Giza Plateau. Its imposing structure standing as a testament to the ingenuity of ancient Egypt. 
It was built as the tomb of Pharaoh Khafre, son of Khufu, and its splendor is further enhanced by its elevated position and the gleaming limestone casing that reflects the sun's rays, making it the epitome of majesty on the plateau. So now we're gonna go to the third pyramid. Oops, do not step on camel poops. So the last pyramid is a little bit smaller compared to the other two. It's called Mankara Pyramid. This pyramid serves as a final resting place for Mankara, son of Khafra. Made with a mix of limestone and Aswan granite, this pyramid is a fascinating blend of materials. And guess what's behind the king's pyramid? Those three smaller ones are the queen's pyramids. I'm on my way to find our driver. I don't know where he is. He told us he'll be at the parking area in between this pyramid but I haven't seen him so I'm walking to find him. With our driver at the wheel, we are heading to a breathtaking panoramic spot in the middle of the desert. From a distance, these three pyramids stand side by side like ancient giants sharing tales of a long lost civilization and it is truly an amazing sight to behold. Because we come here with a tour guide so he is able to drive inside here otherwise if you have the energy to walk, you might need to walk up to 2 to 3 km otherwise you can go and take the camel or the horse right to come in here. Guys, you won't believe this but right in the middle of the desert there are actual toilets so let's go and check it out. Okay so the toilet just now is super comfortable, they are similar like airline toilet. And I can't believe that I'm doing a toilet review in the middle of the desert guys. Anyway, before we wrap up our tour and head out, let's make one last stop inside. We are now finding our way to see the Sphinx or also locally known as Abul Hul. It's a common consensus in between the Egyptologists that the Sphinx is actually the head of Khafre. Oh, it's down there. Okay, I saw it. I think it's around 500 meter walk or 1 kilometer. I'm not too sure. But it's actually just in front of the Great Pyramid. To go there, we have to walk downhill via this causeway and if you guys look at the surface of the ground, they are made of rocks guys. So make sure you wear appropriate shoes that can handle this rough terrain, okay? As we descend the hill, the ancient wonders continue to unfold. Along the causeway on our right side, we spot square-shaped structures. Those are mastabas and rock cut tombs built for the lesser royals. Guys, sometimes our eye can be deceiving. The Great Sphinx looks like it's just in front of us but actually we've walked for 10 minutes and we still haven't arrived yet. We are now somewhere, I believe we've reached downhill and we're passing through the stall selling souvenirs but we still have to make a left turn to go to the Sphinx. By the way guys, if you are coming from the pyramid side, going downhill, so when you see the entrance to the Abul Hul, don't go into the complex but just proceed and walk until the end and you'll see a stairs going down and over there, you'll be able to post with a picture in the middle with Abul Hul in the center. So just now we made a mistake, so whenever we see an entrance door, we went inside but then we have to go in a loop again along the market to go to the correct entrance to take the picture. So we are here for our second time. So don't repeat the same mistake like me. Finally, after 20 minutes of walk, we have made it here guys. So this is a great sphinx standing guard in front of Afra Pyramid. 
It is a majestic creature with a lion's body and a human head that has stood the time watching over the ancient Egyptian necropolis for centuries, witnessing the rise and fall of civilizations. The archaeologists believe that it was built during the reign of Hafra and it is carved from a single block of limestone that sent incredible feat of engineering. Its massive size and intricate details attest to the skill and craftsmanship of the ancient Egyptians and its imposing presence has captured the imaginations of people for millennia, inspiring countless myths and legends. Some believe it is a guardian for the pyramids while others see it as a symbol of royal power. Then there's this wild myth about Napoleon's soldiers using it for target practice and shooting off its nose but surprise, that nose was already missing before the Napoleon arrived in Egypt in 1798. So why is the nose missing? There are several theories but most likely it was damaged by vandals or by erosion from the wind and sand. Basically, Abul Hul is actually located at the exit of the Giza Pyramid Complex. We have completed our visit here in Giza Pyramid. So we are going to make our way to the Grand Egyptian Museum. Okay guys, so we have a little bit of situation here. I ran out of credit so I used my sister's phone to call our driver and ask him to meet us at the exit but because the number is different he thought that I'm someone else and he insists on waiting at the main complex parking. <laughs> oh my god guys I guess we have to walk uphill again for another maybe one kilometer more to those pyramids again. Oh my god. Guys, we are here in National Egyptian Museum to see the mummy. Sorry, I made a mistake just now. The Grand Museum is not open yet, so the entry to here is 200 Egyptian pounds. This amazing museum houses a mind-blowing collection that stretches all the way back to prehistoric times and right up to the modern era. Get ready to be amazed by royal mummies fascinating funerary objects and ancient inscriptions. You'll also find everyday items used by the people throughout the ages giving you a glimpse into their daily life. But that's just the tip of the icebergs, guys. The museum also features incredible statues and jewelries from the Greco Roman period, as well as incredible artwork and artifacts from Coptic, Islamic, and even modern eras. We have finished touring inside the museum. We cannot bring camera downstairs, but there are a lot of royal mummies downstairs, all the Ramses, Seti, Aman Hotep even the Queen Nefertari. So make sure you guys go down there first before you explore outside because all of the mummy collection is downstairs. Guys, our epic 14-day Egyptian adventure is almost over. It's been a mind-blowing experience exploring ancient wonders and immersing ourselves in the heart of Islamic Cairo. Seeing the royal mummies at the museum today reaffirmed the existence of once great rulers and civilization. And as a fellow Muslim, there are some serious wisdom to glean from the pharaoh's tale, those grand tombs and their mummies. For now, it's time to say goodbye to Cairo with hearts full of gratitude and excitement for our next adventure in Mansoura. So this is Amos car. Can fit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I think. <laughs> Can fit everything like 12 luggage already. Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and Jazakallahu Khair for joining us on this incredible journey. Stay curious, stay adventurous and Assalamualaikum.